What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today it's another Power Tour day, but we're gonna do things a little bit different. Today we're hitting Power Tour. Mike, start a pose for you guys. <laughs> it's not a thumbnail, Mike, it's a video. Oh crap. <laughs> Today we are hitting Power Tour thanks to Mike. No. It is in the van where, or sorry, the, what is it, a box we truck. name it something. <sighs> Charlie Brown, I don't know. <laughs> Mike, you can give it a name. We'll call it Jesus for savior. I it's, like that. Okay. <laughs> this is Jesus, <laughs> and this is our power tour savior today. Um, if you didn't see the last video, well, the torque converter blew up in the Monte Carlo. Catastrophic. It's done. We've got another one on the way. We're going to try to fix it so we can take it on the last power tour run in Indianapolis. But today is Louisville. Mm -hmm. We miss Nashville. <clears throat> five hours we spent under a tree out yonder and today um, Mike got us a truck Mike got us a trailer we can now I've got us a hotel we're gonna go dump the car at the hotel yes we're gonna put our gold pass stickers oh, definitely. <laughs> in the U-Haul Mike's idea he said hey we don't have to not make it to power tour we can just do it in a U-Haul well I always want unique different vehicles <laughs> Yeah. Not one U-Haul on no. Power Tour. She's going to stand out. She, she, yeah, we're going to win best in show. We'll have to open the hood so everybody can <laughs> see our... Is this gas? I don't even know. I don't either. We better make sure we know whether it's gas or diesel. So here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to go dump this thing off in the parking lot of our hotel, and then we are going to head over to uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and we're going uh, to go stand in line, drive through in our U-Haul, park in the gold parking, and we're gonna continue our power tour. Like big boys. That's that's right. Let's do it. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. Hustle out, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave uh, To the system, I don't wanna be a slave I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway And in the driveway, is a nice range Cause I grind through the climb, I invite pain You'll never hear me, bitch, nah, I don't complain Just gotta flip the switch and you can go and obtain Anything you want, anything you need Your mind's got the key ingredient, it's belief uh, Better see with the negativity But I just slide right by that energy uh, even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answered a no, man, I still go Go, 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 Alright guys, we made it to the damn event We did it <laughs> uh, honestly can't believe we managed to park right here. We got another buddy from Oklahoma. Uh, they broke down the they actually broke down a couple times. This front spindle literally came off the car, bearing seized up, whole front spindle fell off. They got it fixed, and then the front pump seal on the transmission blew out, and it's a cruise-o-matic, so they haven't been able to uh, get it back on the road. So instead of giving up, see just like us, Oklahoma baby, we don't give up. We made it. We made it. Okay, I shouldn't say we don't give up. I gave up. I did. I gave up. But Monkey Wrench Mike was like, we're not giving up. He said, we're going to do the damn thing. If it uh, will cost a million dollars and takes all day, we're going to get it done. And here we are. You said the other cab, didn't you? What? You said put it in the front of the truck. Yeah. And not back here. Here I am trying to put this back here. <laughs> Mike got us here. We made it. He saved the day. And uh, it's sad that it showed up on the back of a trailer, man. That kind of sucks. But at least we're here. We're going to go get our cards punched. We're going to get checked in. And uh, then we can continue. Now, we're not going to get the long haul uh, award. We're not going to get the plaque at the end of the, the tour. But that's okay. We're going to finish what we started. Even if it means we got to tow this car for the rest of Power Tour. I'm serious. I'll pay for it. Whatever it is. Whatever it takes. We're going to finish this. Mike has me invigorated. I'm motivated now. I'm ready, man. We're going to finish the tour regardless of cost. Even if we have to tow the damn car all the way to Ohio, to Indianapolis. 
wherever we gotta go, we're gonna get it done, guys. We're gonna close this stuff up here, get everything locked up, go get our cards punched, and then we'll go and take a look at some of the cars they have out here. What do you think, Mike? We made it. We have made it. And we got the proof right there. We got the, we got our cards punched. We're missing one, but we're that's missing. Okay. <laughs> it's too bad we, nah, we don't that's want, right. we don't want to cheat, right? <laughs> Uh -huh. I about got knocked over there. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, okay. I don't want to work. Yeah, I'm not here to work. No, we already we did that already. All right, guys. Now let's check out some of the cars they got out here. How about a Kirby on steroids, man? It's been a long time since I've seen a Kirby. I always wanted a Volkswagen because of that movie. And now that I see one lifted with some big wheels on it, I kind of want it even more. That's a really cool build right there. Coming up over here, we've got an old Ford Thunderbird. They did a Coyote swap on, lowering kit, some custom wheels, beautiful paint job. You can clearly see your reflection in that thing, man. They did excellent on this. So shout out to Adam88, 88, 88 Toyota, <laughs> Coyote as I assume what that is. Go check him out. Great build, manual transmission. Absolutely beautiful car. We got a Supra sitting right next to it, man. Tell me this is an absolutely beautiful wow look at all the polished work on this and look at the size of that turbo that is absolutely massive gorgeous paint carbon splitter look at the wheels on this this is beautiful this is a beautiful supra if you guys don't know the price on these things has skyrocketed man i was looking at one at auction the other day the turbo super is over a hundred thousand dollars easy and this one is well over that guys this is a this is a piece of artwork right here beautiful car you got some of your classics across the way over here what did you find go talk to the man you are starstruck where is he at let's go talk to him go get him go chase your man mike go go, go get your man lucky costa lucky costa yeah is that his name for motor trend yeah Run up there and get him, man. Go say, hey, man, I'm a fan. I love what you do. Just jump in there like people do to us. Oh, come on. You're a celebrity too, Mike. Tell him about your YouTube channel. Tell him about mine. <laughs> we saw this on Hot Rod Power Tour a couple years ago. I, I still think this thing's totally cool, man. Never get tired of seeing it. Beautiful paint job. And look at this. This thing is set up right. It's super cool. And then down here... Let's see what else we got. I saw a T-Bird. And what else we got? I think I saw a little Oldsmobile sitting over here too. Oh, you know what? Love the Thunderbird. We got a little Oldsmobile. It's not really little. It's pretty big. Take a look at this monstrosity, man. It's a huge car. This thing's longer than my Cadillac. It's got to be 25 feet long, guys. Wow. God bless Johnny Cash on the back window there. Painless sticker on the side. Of course, we're at the painless booth right here. But check out the old Chrysler with the uh, Christmas tree on the top. The Woody, right? Oh, man. This is a town and country. Not the minivan that they have today. All right, but look at this thing. It just reminds me of the Griswolds. With that Christmas tree, the, the icing on the cake right there, man. Super cool car. It's actually in really nice condition. The interior is pretty dang good beautiful car absolutely beautiful we're going to continue on guys see what other trouble we can get into i gotta go find monkey wrench mike before he gets himself in trouble chasing his uh chasing his his uh man crushes down on so it's funny uh we just <laughs> we actually met the parents of the son who yeah. owns this car he built this mm -hmm. he painted this himself and he saw me filming his video and he came over here and he was like hey man that was my car you were filming uh turns out he painted that and then some subscribers that we met yesterday are his parents and they rolled up in on this and he painted this, this too one. yeah adam does some good work Adam is awesome. That's the, num the name on the car, so yeah. Adam is the name on the car, okay. This one, uh, he said he painted 12 years ago. Wow. And when I asked him, I said, what did you do, sand it down to 3,000? He said 1,500. That's, 50 all, uh, that's it, he said the rest of it is cutting and polishing. Woo! Yeah, I thought for sure that this had been sanded down to like 3,000, both of them. And this 12-year-old paint job, and it still looks almost brand new. 
this guy can paint man like he's got it he's got it down when it comes to paint and bodywork both of these obviously coyote swapped he's got a f-150 uh harley davidson edition also coyote swapped as well this one's supposed to be on air ride he told us he had a similar situation to ours his harley davidson truck broke down on him he went down two cylinders it's roush charged oh, no, yeah. he went down two cylinders yesterday and we lost our transmission yesterday and uh, his guy brought him uh, his other car so that he could continue power tour picked up the car that broke down and sent it back home so cool story man cool parents cool dude the, these are awesome builds, man. He's got the Thunderbird covers on the Coyote motor right there, man. Beautiful job. Great guy, great parents, great cars. So you finally got to meet your favorite TV host of all time. I did. And he was just I as did. great. Just the same on TV. And now you're happy. Mobile Tech Lucky. The whole Raymond Lucky Costa. The whole trip is now worth it, right? All the work, absolutely everything. I kind of mumbled a little bit. I was really <laughs> nervous, got sweaty, but yeah. You got nervous. You're I know, and I've interviewed everybody. You're on TV yourself. It. I used to be. You still are. I guarantee I can find you on, I guarantee I can find yes. you on YouTube. There are bloopers on YouTube. I know there are. You've shown them to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them. All right, he's met his, uh, he's met his man crush. Unfortunately, my man crush is dead. Patrick Swayze, rest in peace. Yeah. Why? Well, because he smoked, probably. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that would be. He drove that Mercedes. Yeah, he did. You remember that Roadhouse? Yeah. yeah of course you remember that. Yeah. All right, let's look around. Let's see. Let's see what we got out here. Uh, there's plenty of cool stuff, but you know what's not cool? The temperature. Well, that, that's very good. The temperature, and they don't have any refreshments. I, there's nowhere to. Get if it. there are, I don't see them. We've been all over the place and i don't see any refreshments out here at all yeah, which doesn't make a lot of sense on a hot day like today i mean i guess it's only 83 but it feels well we're on the concrete too yeah it's the blacktop oh look another monte carlo oh, what i think this is one we saw yesterday yeah they probably have a good torque converter in theirs <laughs> uh we should ask them when they show up can we borrow your torque converter for the rest of power tour i could really use it same same stripes slightly different wheels but overall same car they got t-tops too true ss same color interior and everything man and he's got the same radio he's got the the he actually has the newer radio but it's the old school it's the old school radio they're just something about these cars man they look they are so clean Mm -hmm. Oh, look, look, look. <laughs> Here's what they didn't finish. U-bolts, <laughs> fuel tank skid, rear bumper, roll pan. Check lug nuts. <laughs> they, for <laughs> they, for <laughs> they, forgot a, they forgot a couple things oh, on, their, on their silver. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. That's, that beats a whiteboard any day. Oh, LS swapped with air conditioning. Yeah, look at that. Custom wiring and everything. Oh, man, look at the patina on this one. Ooh. Chevrolet 3100. LS swapped as well, of course. Ooh, their brakes are, uh, well, it's leaking brake fluid and it's eating the paint. There's always something. There's always something on these trips, man. Oh, look at the Scottsdale. Wow. Oh my goodness, beautiful C10. Yeah, oh man, another, <laughs> I'm going nuts over here, man. An Impala. It's got the Mason badge on the uh, air cleaner there. I love these cars. Look at the Mustang back there. God, there's so <laughs> there's so much to see. Is that the convertible? It is, isn't it? So that's that's. It my is. Mistake. That was your big no. Yeah. That yours wasn't that that old. They didn't make a four cylinder turbo in that. No, no, no. When my when I my dad came home with his car dealer friend. They had one of these, yeah. and they had a 1980 Mustang four-cylinder turbo. And you took the four-cylinder turbo over this? they both this? the same. They both got them for the same price, and I could have my pick. And you picked the... I picked the newer you one, picked like an idiot, and I didn't pick the one just like this. So you could have had a car like... I could like, have had just like this. Yeah. Wow, you are dumb. I'm stupid. You're very dumb. This, this yeah. be the owner <laughs> right here. Am I dumb? I didn't choose this for my, for my first car. Yeah. He got the Fox body, the turbo, yeah. turbo four-cylinder four four instead of one yeah. of these. 
because he wanted something newer. Most people didn't like these girls that new. Got us a Barracuda here, Mike. Ooh, I think this one may be tubbed. You see how deep those wheels go? Look how thick they are. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that sucker's tubbed. You got dual carburetors. Yeah, that's bad right there, guys. That's sick. I do like my old Plymouth, man. Roadrunner, 440, six pack. The six pack, I wonder if it's really a six. I guarantee you it's a six pack under the hood. Three two barrel carburetors, Mike. Yeah, and they all gotta be kept in sync. That would be sick. And they all have to operate properly. Otherwise it goes to hell in a hand basket. <laughs> yeah, you don't see too many six packs running around. Old Ford Ranger. I've had a few of these in my day. I actually really like these. Is that an old Cougar? That is, that's an old Cougar over there. Look at that. They got so, any car that you can imagine is probably sitting out here. Wow. That's an XR7 too. Oh, look at this. They ain't messing around on their air conditioning, guys. They, <laughs> they're keeping every single degree they can. They wrap the whole air box, the lines and everything. Wow. I don't blame them, man. It gets hot. It gets, mm -hmm. we, we know firsthand, it gets, these old cars get real hot inside too, man. I know those, those doors are, look at that. I almost, let me, look how big the whole car is, man. She's massive. Yeah, I like it. I like the wheels, the old Kragers and the white letter tires. You know me and my white letter tires. All right, guys, let's take a walk down yonder and see what else we can find. So we're just walking through. We came up on this GTS right here. What do you think, Mike? Do you like my Viper better or this Viper better? Do I have to be honest? Yeah, you do. Be honest, hurt my feelings. I kinda like this one. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think most people like this one better, man. That hard top, yeah. isn't, it, isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I like, this, I like this one a lot too. The only difference is though, is I own the one that I have, so I like mine better just because I actually own it, right? <laughs> That's the only reason I love the car. This is called the machine, and since it's got an LS Fest license plate on it, I'm going to assume that this is uh, LS swapped. So is this a is this a uh, an AMC? Is that what this is? I would think so. It looks like one. That with the door handle. That red, white, and blue. This is beautiful, man. Yeah, I'm re I'm really digging this. Wow, the machine, Rebel, Steve Geary's Body Shop. So shout out to them. Obviously they had a hand in all this. Paint, decals, If that, that may be painted. Those may not be decals, that may be actually painted on there. God, that's gorgeous. What a beautiful ride. We passed this one on the highway earlier. I remember that, they waved at us. Look at that yellow on black, man. Black and yellow, that's a gorgeous color combination. Love it. Okay, so we're, we're in, Got a lot of Plymouth over here. Super Sport 396. This is what we had in the uh, Chevelle. You remember that? 396? Yeah. Uh -huh. This is slightly older than the one we came in in, but uh, that was a hard trip, man. That was uh, that, was that Chevelle was a, a difficult trip. Plymouth Scamp. Scamp. I remember you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'll ever buy one again after that, <laughs> after that ordeal. <laughs> Uh, honestly, you can't fault the cars for the problems, you know, it's the people that put them together or the people that make the parts uh, in some instances is where you end up running into some of the trouble. All right, let's continue looking around. Good Lord, an old Continental. Wow. You want to talk about a boat, Mike, look at that. Doors open backwards. Look at those wheels. Oh my God, with white walls. I got to get a picture of this one, man. That is sick. Everything about this car is awesome. Back doors open backwards, hood opens backwards. What a unique ride. What do you think, Mike? Is this something you drive? You'd roll this. You'd roll, you'd roll this. So would I. Wow. Take a look at that. In oh, the interior. Mike, this is beautiful. Like, this is pristine. Wow. Somebody put a lot of time into this. A lot of time and a lot of money. 
it's uh, it's almost flawless i mean the paint and everything on this is absolutely beautiful the vinyl top i love these i do everything about this car man i would roll this in a heartbeat over here you got the little red express you don't see too many of these anymore either there was somebody on facebook marketplace selling one of these uh in oklahoma oh really recently i thought about buying it I, it's such a cool old truck man yeah. they're so unique look at the dual snorkel mm -hmm. 360 express i like it then we got this monster truck over here he's getting ready to roll out this big old chevy man that thing is super cool awesome we pat didn't we pass him in the u-haul yeah 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 or maybe he passed us maybe i should start saying they passed us it, <laughs> i'm not sure we were passing too many people but i do i do remember him you remember the people that wave at you that's it that's and then the ones that don't we delete the footage <laughs> <laughs> all right guys uh we're gonna walk around a little bit more let's see if we can find anything else for you guys to check out well we're walking up on something pretty cool oh there's another mustang convertible old one 70s uh if i'm not mistaken this is a mustang svo i don't think it was an svt i think it was an svo it was a turbocharged four-cylinder very similar to what you had when you picked yours out and you really don't see these very much anymore guys really cool to see one of these sitting out here today isn't it an amazing old fox body yeah it's it's good to see stuff like that out here man really cool there's the bathrooms boy i could sure use i could sure use one of them right about now golly i'm dying so i don't know what's I don't know what's going on out here today, but this venue is pretty bad, man. It's a it's a pretty rough, pretty rough venue. Oh wow, that's gorgeous. We're running short on cars. In all fairness, we are pretty late today. But we made it. We did. We made it. We almost didn't, but we we made it with probably an hour and a half to spare. We met some subscribers, which is really cool. Yep. It's always awesome to see people in. Uh, you know be able to shake their hand get a picture with them or whatever show some appreciation for them watching the channels and keeping us in business all right guys we're gonna walk down a little bit further and uh i think that's just about it we'll see what happens at the hotel tonight though right yeah see i can't go out there and do it now my, my car is broken take the truck do a burnout in the u-haul yeah well it's in your name okay perfect i can't get in trouble <laughs> hell yeah brother we're gonna we're gonna say it mike do it for dale do it for do dale, it for dale. <laughs> <laughs> mike knows his old cars i think this is a pinto i think i think it's a pacer but i'll be completely we'll honest with you out. i don't know the difference <laughs> Maybe. My, mike's trying to help me he said that the 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 what did you say the pinto is bubblier the, pacer was the bubbly. pacer's bubblier more like a fishbowl this is it's another one of those i've always wanted man it's a mercury bobcat okay so, so you're ford, wrong ford pinto mercury bobcat you were so. wrong nope nope this is a mercury you <laughs> no yeah he was right <laughs> he was right i don't know i love the oddball kind of quirky you know weird unique there's so many cars to look at but i always find myself gravitating towards the stuff that I think most people just aren't all that interested in but apparently my audience is because they continue watching my videos so we're like-minded people I think I think that's gonna be about it I don't know about you Mike but I am parched yeah parched dying of thirst oh our uh, our guy left we never even got to meet him I think his name's Sean Sean, Thanks, Sean. Sean man hey I was looking forward to meeting you. That's why we parked next to him. I thought we were going to get to hang out. Who knows? Maybe we'll be at the same hotel later. It could happen. We yeah. could park the U-Hauls right next to each other. You know, drop the trailers right next to each other. Then we could race U-Haul trucks. All right. I think we're going to get out of here, guys. We will catch up with you here in a little bit. Well, just like that, another day is over. And uh, unfortunately, we went from having a bunch of great news today and everything going really well to finding out some pretty bad news today. Uh, as you can see, it is 
almost two o'clock in the morning and uh well we very recently just got some kind of disappointing news about the monte carlo so as i said earlier monster transmissions was hooking us up they got the converter uh, they actually had to build it uh, they got the converter built for us and they said they were expediting it out and when i was on the phone with them I told them on multiple occasions that Power Tour ends Friday, okay? Today, just for reference, today, right now at 2 o'clock in the morning is Thursday the 13th. Power Tour is literally now over in one day after today. It is over Friday evening one way or another. We're finished. That's it. Well, I got the UPS tracking number for the new converter. And unfortunately, they did not expedite the shipping. It is shipped via UPS ground from Florida, and it will not be here until the 17th. So now, not only, it, we have so many more problems now, guys. It's, it's, it, this has literally thrown everything into chaos. So let me, let me tell you what the issue is now that we know that the converter is not coming until the 17th. Number one, we won't be here on the 17th. Mike has to be back before then. I have to be back before then. Um, in fact, we both have to be back by the 16th. He's got stuff he's got to do, videos he's got to film, and so do I. Um, he's also got his dog in basically daycare, and he has to pick his dog up, and also this costs him money to have his dog in there. So we both are forced to go back home. We cannot be here when the converter comes in on the 17th. That is problem number one. No big deal, right? Well, here's another problem. On the 17th, the converter is going to be delivered to the shop down here in Indiana. We're not gonna be in Indiana. So now the converter is gonna be delivered to a shop that I'm not gonna be anywhere near. So how do I get this $1,600 converter from that shop back to me. Apparently, this converter is on a pallet. That's what I was told. I, I'm not sure why a converter, which is approximately this big around, it is heavy, but I'm a little confused as to why it's on a pallet. Uh, that, that changes everything. This, this whole thing Thing is messed up. I've already had to contact the guy with the shop and tell him I don't see how we're going to be able to make this work. I don't. I, I, I apologize to him. I feel bad because obviously I have an appointment with him tomorrow or this morning. I have an appointment with him and if anybody else is on the power tour and they needed help, he had to put them off tomorrow because he was going to help me, which has put other people out. And I just all around, I feel really bad. I feel it's, this has messed absolutely everything up. We still have another issue too. Like I said, this the, this converter has caused a crazy amount of problems. And another one being because they told us this was a done deal and we were going to have this by Friday. I told them if we did not if the converter couldn't get here by Friday, we needed to send it to AAR headquarters in Oklahoma because that's the direction I would need to go. I told them power tour ends Friday. Therefore, if it can't be delivered by then, it needs to go to Oklahoma and I'm gonna to have to figure something else out. They said it's gonna be expedited, we're gonna be fine. Great, it's not gonna be here. It's not gonna be here. So here's the problem. Because they told us that this was gonna work out this way, we have to return this U-Haul, okay, in Terre Haute, Indiana. So instead of just leaving from here and heading home, which would be great, no, 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 we can't do that. We can't do that. We have to take this to Terre Haute and drop it off on Wabash Avenue. And then after we drop it off, that means we need to rent another one. This one has already cost over $300 just for the truck and the trailer to get us a few hours to Terre Haute, Indiana. Then after that, we get to rent another one, another U-Haul, another trailer, and that's gonna cost $1,300. Yeah, $1,300, and that doesn't even include fuel. And let's not even get into the fact that I prepaid for hotels for this entire trip. I booked every hotel that I needed in January of this year. It is June. Okay, six months ago, I booked every room. I spent over $1,100 in hotels, and guess what? The car broke down because of a part that failed. Now I can't get to those hotels. I had to cancel all of my reservations, and guess what? I'm not getting a refund. 
No, I'm out $1,100 on all of the hotels that I was not able to use. And on top of that, this is great. The hotel yesterday that came up unexpectedly, that was $168. The hotel tonight was $135. All right, so, so not only am I out the $1,100, for the other hotels that I'm not able to make it to, but I am now also having to pay for additional hotels that we weren't expecting. Additional cost for a U-Haul truck and a trailer, and then another U-Haul truck and another trailer that I wasn't expecting. This trip has become unbelievably expensive. This was not in my budget, and I can't believe that this is even happening. I can't believe that we were told this was gonna be here only to find out after they're closed. I can't even call them to say, hey, we have a problem. There's nothing I can do. They shipped it out, UPS ground. And now I, I like my, my head's about to explode, guys. And you know, in the big scheme of life, is this a big deal? No, not really. But in the moment, right now it is. Not to mention it's absolutely embarrassing. I have met so many subscribers just today alone. When we showed up, at the Louisville uh, venue and got our cards punched, we came back out, man, people were finding us left and right. It was crazy how many people were walking up to us, taking pictures with us. They watch our channels. They love what we do. And they didn't know that the Monte Carlo had broken down. They came to see the Monte Carlo. They got to see it and they were all just in love with the paint job. It all came out great. They were so happy to see it, but they're also disappointed because it's like, damn, man, I feel for you. That is so sad that you spent so much time and money on a car that's now broken down and it's not able to complete power tour on its own. And it's because of a failed component that honestly should not have failed. Um, I babied this car. There was a break-in period for the torque converter, the transmission. The engine did not need a break-in period, but I was very gentle on the transmission. I put about 1,300, 1,000 to 1,300 miles on this car, being very careful with it because I wanted everything to be perfect. And it's crazy to me that everything was perfect, everything. This car has been absolutely flawless since we got that belt figured out on the uh, the water pump issue there. The car's been flawless. So, you know, we start hammering on it a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder, you know, until I'm comfortable that the car is solid, no problems. And then just out of nowhere, we make it 700 and some miles without issue, no problem. And then we wake up one morning, we drive 10 miles or so, 10 or 15 miles in the morning, gingerly. I wasn't hitting the gas, I wasn't going crazy, I wasn't going super fast or anything. 75 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, cruise it down the highway, go to stop at a Walmart to pick a few things up and, and boom, just like that. No warning, no notice, nothing funny happened until I got off the highway, came to a stop and the car died. And that's it. Converters rattling like crazy, and I don't even—I don't even understand. Nothing happened. We drove it literally the night before at around midnight to go get burgers from Wendy's, and the car was fine. We drove it back. We parked it. It was fine. Got up in the morning, started it, got on the highway. It was fine. And now we have a catastrophic failure of the torque converter, and, and I—I ha I can't explain it. I—I I don't know why. All I know is that it's. Uh, it's depressing, it's humiliating, it's, it's embarrassing to have this car on a trailer dragging it to the venues. Now, with that said, Monkey Wrench Mike and I, everything is up in the air right now because we had an appointment tomorrow morning to go do the torque converter on this. We were gonna then try to jump in the car and drive it to Ohio from Indiana to make the next venue. I don't know what we're doing now. It is literally all up in the air. I don't know if we're just gonna skip going to this shop and go straight to Ohio and hit the venue. And then, you know, the next day drive this truck and car, uh, truck and trailer to Indianapolis to hit the venue. The goal is to finish the power tour. That's the goal, to finish power tour with the truck and the trailer if we have to. Um, but when I had the opportunity to fix the car properly using this gentleman's shop, um, obviously that kind of took priority because I'd like to finish the power tour in this car, not with it being on a trailer. So right now it's all in the air. In the morning, you know, I don't know, nine o'clock or so in the morning, that gentleman's gonna start making some phone calls. The torque converter in this is kind of a weird one. It's not a nine inch, it's not a 12, or sorry, it's not a, yeah, it's not a nine inch, it's not a 12 inch, it's a 10 inch converter. Obviously it's a 20, 
four to 2800 stall, you're not gonna find one of those locally. And we don't even know what the spline count is yet. I'm gonna have to get a hold of Monster tomorrow morning and find out what the spline count is. It could be 27, it could be 30, most likely because it's a higher horsepower uh, converter. It's designed for higher horsepower. It's probably going to be a 30 spline. That would be my guess. Um, and it, it's just, it's all in the air. Nobody knows anything at this point. So that's it. That's enough of me complaining. I want to make it clear that I've, I've totally enjoyed Power Tour. Um, this has been, even though it's been a bad experience with the torque converter going out, it's been a wonderful experience meeting a lot of great people, uh, people always willing to help, people encouraging us to continue on and not give up. You know, it, it's really kind of reinvigorated the spirit of Power Tour in me, and it has kept me going through this whole ordeal. Uh, I, I'm not sure how I feel about everything that's going on right now. There's been a lot of being told one thing, but something else is being done. Something else happens, uh, hours not, and, and here's the other thing. Uh, the, the gentleman that I typically deal with at, uh, at Monster, he hasn't returned a single email and he hasn't returned my calls. I've left, I've left voicemails for him. I've left emails for him. He ghosted me and, and that it's, it's such a shame. And I'm not here to bash the company. I want to remind everybody that Monster Transmissions, they actually sponsored the entire transmission on this car. And it was an expensive one. It was a $5,100 transmission. Hell, the torque converter alone is $1,600. And I absolutely appreciate them for uh, having faith in me that I was going to go through with this and complete this project and see it to fruition, which I did. I completed my part of this. Unfortunately, because of this failed component, it has cost me thousands of dollars out of pocket. Literally, we're probably looking, by the time I'm done with hotels, the trucks and trailers, if this all goes down the way I think it is, I'm gonna be out at least $2,500 to $3,000 in additional expenses that we weren't supposed to be out of. Not to mention the torque converters being sent to the wrong place and what is, I, I'm just, it's exceptionally frustrating. And with that said, I would have rather just paid the money out of pocket three thousand dollars sucks paying five grand for a transmission obviously that's a lot of money i would have rather just paid for the unit out of pocket and had it not break down you know i'd rather had the reliability and 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 the comfort of knowing that it was a good quality product and right now i'm really i just I don't trust the converter is what it is. The first one went out and now I'm worried that if I put another one in it, is it gonna go out? I, I, I'm very insecure about that. And I wanna make it clear, I'm not here to bash anybody. That, that's not the point. I am so thankful that they sponsored the transmission. That means a lot to me. You know, Holly came out, they, they backed me on this build. Uh, Smitting Performance came out, they backed me on this build and Monster Transmissions. It's huge to have these kinds of names sponsoring this channel. It's absolutely huge, and I appreciate each and every one of them. I'm just highly frustrated, aggravated, and knowing that I'm gonna be out at least $2,500 to $3,000, it's just, it's disappointing. It, it, the whole thing is very disappointing is what I'm, it's just, that's what I'm getting to at the end of the day. I'm gonna get out of here because I'm ranting and I really do need to go to bed. Uh, I'm very aggravated over everything and the miscommunications about it's gonna be here Friday, so we're gonna send it to a shop, but no, it's not. Um, it's actually going to arrive after you're already gone. And now what are we gonna do? Because we thought we were gonna have the car. Now we find out we're not gonna have the car. Are we even gonna be able to get a, a, a U-Haul truck and trailer or will they be sold out? We don't know. We, we have no idea what's going on right now. We are literally stuck and we're kind of at the mercy of fate at the moment. And that's not very comforting. And to answer some questions before they, before they arise, the biggest one is why are you renting a U-Haul uh, truck like this? You could rent one of their vans. You could rent one of their pickup trucks. We actually tried to do that. U-Haul said that they do not rent those one way. Obviously, these are one-way trucks. We're, we're not bringing them back. We're taking them to AAR headquarters. There's a U-Haul right across the street from my house uh, out there. We're going to drop these off, and we're done. Um, we're not turning around and bringing them back to where we pick them up from. Um, so U-Haul does not. That's what we were told by two or three different U-Haul facilities. They do not one-way rent their pickup trucks, their vans. You have to get one of these monstrosities to do it. So that's why we're in one of these. And as far as like a rental car, we looked into that too. Um, an SUV slash pickup truck, you're talking $1,300, $1,400, and that's without the trailer. 
because they give you unlimited mileage. Um, one way to Oklahoma from here, it's thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars, guys, and that does not include a trailer. And some of their trucks don't have tow packages, and some of their SUVs don't have tow packages. So you really don't know what you're getting. Um, it just we might as well just stick to this because it's going to be about the same price and we know what we're what we're getting ourselves into all right so i hope that answers some of your questions we're going to do our best to continue on power tour we're going to do everything we can to complete this last leg of the venue we've got uh somewhere in ohio i don't even remember where anymore and then indianapolis those are our last two stops and if we can complete those check in at those venues we're going to try to do it with the monte carlo in tow so that the car can at least make it to those last two venues and uh and we can check in and then we'll figure it all out from there not to worry obviously this is a story that's it's a roller coaster man everything is bad then everything's like oh it's going to work out and then it goes bad again and who knows what it's going to do next stay tuned we're going to have another video for you coming tomorrow where we're going to find out that we're, we're going to spill the tea like what what is it what's going to happen are we going to be able to fix it are we going to find a converter or is monster transmissions going to be able to get us the converter quicker can they intercept the package i have i have no idea what's going to happen so stay tuned and we will find out together if you enjoyed this video hit the thumbs up button and let me know consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed and be sure to check out monkey wrench mike down below he has been a huge help to this channel and these videos absolutely huge i cannot thank him enough and if you want to show him some appreciation go subscribe to his channel comment on some of his recent videos i would appreciate it i know he would too till next time stay safe out there everybody i look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one